Hello, my name's Courtney Lai. I'm an orthopedic registrar at Werribee Mercy Hospital. And today we'll be talking about finger and thumb traumatic amputation and replantation. Let's talk about some of the definitions, epidemiology and history to start with. So for the purposes of today, an amputation is the loss of all or part of a limb or extremity. With regards to traumatic amputations, um, they're the most common cause of upper limb amputation uh, compared to lower limb where it's more often um, systemic processes. Male to, male to female, uh, four to one. So it's a much more common uh, injury in males. And most traumatic upper limb amputations occur at the level of the digits. When we talk about secondary amputation in the literature, that refers to what we typically call um, terminalization. So a further procedure to debride and get a clean base um, of an amputated um, limb or digit. Replantation refers to the reattachment of an amputated anatomic part. Uh, throughout history, it's been reported as early as 1814, but with modern microsurgical techniques using anastomoses and microscopes to reattach blood vessels, that, that was first reported by Komatsu and Tammy in 1963. So a little bit over 50 years now. When we assess these injuries, some of the things we need to look for uh, classifying the site or zone of injury, uh, understanding what the mechanism of injury is, whether it's a sharp dissection, like a, what they call a guillotine mechanism, whether it's a blunt dissection or laceration type, for example, with a lawnmower or a power saw, an avulsion, maybe a ring has gone round a digit and pulled it off, a crush or a blast injury. The timing of injury is important to know, so we have an idea as to whether there is a chance of reimplantation. Associated injuries. So if the patient's been in a multi-trauma, for instance, then they're probably not going to be a candidate for a replantation. Past medical history, including things like diabetes, smoking, anything that might affect the vascular status. And it's important to get radiography or x-rays to uh, elucidate the nature of any bony injuries as well. Um, the figure to the right here is um, a summation of some of the um, classifications of distal uh, digit amputations. Um, several authors have proposed dis different classifications based on the anatomy with regards to the nail bed and uh, also with regards to the, the vascular anatomy of the fingertip. Um, one of the most commonly used ones is the uh, TMI classification which divides the zone one flexor tendon injuries into subzone one and two with regards to the base of the nail. Uh, so if we do get a patient with an amputated digit, um, or hand for that matter, uh, initial management to try and increase the chances of reimplantation include, from the patient point perspective, making sure that prophylactic antibiotics and tetanus immunisation is on board, hydrating the patient, making sure that it's a warm environment, and giving adequate analgesia. With the stump, it's important to clean it, get hemostasis if possible with elevation and compression. And with the amputated part, uh, again clean it, followed by wrapping it in dampened gauze, then sealing that in a plastic bag, and then placing the sealed plastic bag on ice, taking care not to freeze the amputated part, but we want to keep it cool. Some of the considerations that have to be taken um, as to whether to decide for replantation or secondary amputation include, as we've talked about, the mechanism of injury. So a sharp dissection will have a better chance of replantation compared with crush injuries or lacerations. The viability of the tissue the level of the injury, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit more detail later, the number of digits and which digits they are, if we're talking about digits that have been amputated, ischemic time, so warm is the amount of time that it has not been on ice, um, the digits, um, warm ischemic time up to six hours is typically accepted now for more proximal amputations, only uh, only about three hours, whereas cold, amputa cold ischemic time you can double that, so up to 12 hours for digits up to six hours for more proximal amputations. Um, the expected functional outcome and patient characteristics, including their age, their occupation, and their medical history. 
predicted morbidity, length of rehabilitation and financial considerations have to be considered as well. With regards to replantation, some of the relative indications would be an isolated extremity injury. So we're not talking about multi-trauma or further injuries up the limb, just an isolated extremity. If there's an injury to the thumb, uh, that would be a strong um, factor in terms of uh, suggesting replantation. If there's multiple digits involved, another strong consideration to replant. In children who've got a better healing potential uh, and Another relative indication for replantation is a single digit in flexor zone one. Relative contraindications include a single digit in flexor zone two. So that's from the metacarpal heads and the start of the, um, of the fibrous tunnels through to the insertion of the flexor digitorum superficialis. Those um, injuries have got, uh, they're very difficult to repair the tendons in that zone. Uh, some of the mechanisms of injury, including crush, mangling injuries or heavily contaminated wounds, prolonged warm ischemia time, and associated medical comorbidities, including smoking and diabetes, for instance. If we're heading down replantation, some of the things we have to talk about with a patient um, as potential risks include potentially needing to take grafts, so harvesting vessels, nerves, and skin. It's a longer surgery than a, uh, than a secondary amputation. There can be a prolonged hospital admission to monitor the success uh, and acute complications. It can be a more prolonged rehabilitation with more time off work. Often there's further surgery to address tendon issues down the track. Uh, and the replanted limb can have decreased motor and sensory function and cold sensitivity compared to pre-injury levels. Just briefly on terminalisation or secondary amputation. So there's various ways um, that um, we can get the stump to heal over. It can be done by debridement and letting things granulate up and healing by secondary intention alone. Occasionally you can, or you can consider shortening the bone and getting primary closure of the skin overward. Full thickness skin graft from the hypothenar region is an option, as are local flaps or even more distant flaps with pedicles. If replantation is being considered, the steps are debatable and often adapted case by case. But uh, irrigation and debridement is the first priority. And then exploring both the stump and the amputated um, digit as to its viability and to identify and tag the structures to come up with a plan as to what will be happening surgically. If there's a prolonged ischemic time, a temporary vascular shunt can be established to re-establish blood supply. We need some sort of structure to repair things onto, so the bone is usually the next thing that's addressed. Um, some authors suggest routinely shortening the bone to accommodate for soft tissue loss and to decrease tension on anastomoses and soft tissue repairs. Fixation of the bone. K-wires provide a more rapid fixation. Um, certainly in more proximal amputations, more rigid fixation, including plates and screws, can be considered at, um, either primarily or down the track to achieve absolute stability. As I alluded to, the order of addressing the soft tissues is somewhat controversial and may be altered case by case. If there are multiple digits involved, for instance, um, typically it's easier to address the single anatomic thing on each digit in sequence if the plan is to replant all the digits uh, rather than going digit by digit and completing each one before going on to the next digit. But uh, one suggested order is to Next address the things on the dorsum, so extensor tendon and veins, before addressing things on the volar aspect, including flexor tendon, so working basically from deep to superficial here, and then addressing arteri arteries, uh, which are repaired by debriding to healthy intima, and then creating an anastomosis with very uh, thin nylon sutures, uh, 
if the anastomosis is under too much tension, even with uh, shortening, graft with either an artery, a reversed vein or synthetic graft may be considered. And many surgeons will ask for heparin to be administered systemically or locally at this stage to reduce the risk of thrombosis. Next is the nerves. So they're receptive to healthy fascicles and the epineurium is repaired with, again, narrow nylon sutures. If there's too much of a bridge, a graft um, or a conduit can be inserted. Uh, and again, some authors suggest that repair may not be necessary for the very distal amputations of digits, that being in flexor zone one. And finally, once all those structures have been addressed, finally to the skin, which can be closed either with primary repair or sometimes if there's too much damage, local flaps or skin grafts need to be used. Uh, just because the surgery has been performed doesn't mean that the patient's out of the woods with their, um, with their replantation. So like preoperatively, it's important to optimise the patient's systemic condition uh, by administering intravenous fluids and ensuring that they're kept warm. Regional nerve blockade is, is suggested um, to firstly help with pain and also it may help keep local vessels dilated, um, but that does come at the um, risk of having difficulty assessing sensation of the, uh, of the digit. Um, anticoagulation and low dose aspirin in theory should reduce the risk of uh, thrombosis, um, but the evidence for that is somewhat limited. Elevation, particularly to reduce the risk of venous congestion. Avoiding smoking and other vasoconstrictors, including coffee in, in the acute phases. And um, monitoring, so this is done at least hourly in the first 24 hours, of aspects including colour, turgo and capillary refill. Uh, applying a thermometer to the skin to see if there's any decrease in temperature uh, is often an ind uh, indication that thrombosis could be occurring, as are pulse oximetry and applying a Doppler ultrasound. If there is uh, signs of ischemia, a prompt return to theatre is indicated, uh, as in these situations, the ischemic time that you have is even lower than, than in the first instance. Um, if there's signs of venous congestion, uh, some suggestions include controlled bleeding or medical leeches with adequate antibiotic coverage and checking blood markers to ensure the patient's not losing too much blood to the point of requiring transfusions. Replant failure. Uh, the most common cause in the first 24 hours is arterial thrombosis. Venous insufficiency can cause failure in the following days. Uh, Hematoma infection can cause failure later down the track. And whether it's uh, a replantation or terminalisation that's been performed, uh, rehabilitation is crucial to try and regain the patient's pre um, maximal function. So involvement of a hand therapist is paramount. Uh, it does depend on what level um, the surgery or injury has been performed at. But uh, for a lot of injuries, an early range of uh, protective movement with tenodesis effect can be initiated followed by holding the hand in intrinsic plus and intrinsic minus positions, um, followed by a couple of weeks later, going on to finger flexion with the wrist in neutral position, and then at four to six weeks time, returning to more full range of movement actively. There's some of the references I've referred to. It's a, it's a big topic, but hopefully that's given a, an overview on uh, replantation and amputation in traumatic situations in, in the hand.